Hello, kings, queens, and energy geeks. Powder Milk here, and welcome to another video. Today, we are doing a blind commentary. Yes, a blind commentary. This is something I don't normally do, but I wanted to do this because I haven't done fan fiction in a while, and I love fan fiction. And today's video is on Fallout Equestria. And I've, if you can't tell by the video, but Fallout Equestria is something that's always been highly suggested to me, and I always, and I always, plus I love My Little Pony, and I love. Fallout, so why not combine the two, you know? I thought this was a pretty g good idea. Whoever came up with this, honestly. Um, your name, I don't remember your name, whoever wrote the story. I think they'll mention it in a minute. But, I do remember where we are. Where I, I, Actually, not where we were, but I do remember what the story's about. It's about Little Pip and his quest to find Velvet, I believe, is the girl's name. And... This is like 50 something videos long, so I'm just gonna like put them all into one little thing. And I got about 20 minutes before I have to go to the defect and stuff. You might actually end up hearing the bugle call in a minute. So, here we go. Uh, let me find my mouse. And boom. Once upon a time in the magical land of Equestria, there came an era when the ideals of friendship gave way to greed, selfishness, paranoia. And a jealous reaping of dwindling space and natural resources. That guy's voice is amazing. Lands took up arms against their neighbors. The end of the world occurred much as we had predicted. The world was plunged into an abyss of bale fire and dark magic. The details are trivial and pointless. The reasons, as always, purely our own. The world was wiped nearly clean of life. A great cleansing. A magical spark struck by pony hooves quickly raged out of control. Mega spells rained from the skies. Entire lands were swallowed in flames and fell beneath the boiling oceans. Pony kind was almost extinguished, their spirits becoming part of the ambient radiation that blanketed the lands. A quiet darkness fell across the world. But it was not, as some have predicted, the end of the world. Instead, the apocalypse was simply the prologue for another bloody chapter in pony history. In the early days, thousands were spared the horrors of the Holocaust by taking refuge in enormous underground shelters known as stables. But when they emerged, they had only the hell of the wastes to greet them. All except those in the stable too. For on that fateful day when spellfire rained from the sky, the giant steel doors of stable two swung closed. And never reopened. God, this guy's voice. I am not gay, but that guy's voice is sexy as hell. If I'm going to tell you about the adventure of my life, explain how I got to this place with these people, and why I did what I'm going to do next. I should probably start by explaining a little bit about pit bucks. Pit bucks, huh? Oh. What is a pit buck? A pit buck is a device worn on a foreleg just above the hook. Issued to every pony in a stable when they were old enough to start work. A blending of unicorn pony magic and science, your pit buck will keep a constant measure of your health, and even help administer healing poultices and other medicine, track and organize everything in your saddle packs, assist in repairs, and keep all manner of notes and maps available to hoof tap. Plus, it allows you to listen to the stable broadcast whenever you would like, as it can tune into and decrypt just about any radio frequency. And that's not all. A pony's pit buck generates an EFS, eyes forward sparkle, that will indicate direction and help gauge whether the ponies or creatures around you are hostile. And perhaps most impressively, a pit buck can magically aid you in a fight for brief periods of time through the use of SATS, Stable Tech Arcane Targeting Spell. Oh, and a feature not to be forgotten, it can keep track of the location of tagged objects or people, including the wearers of other pit bucks. So, if a pony somehow got lost, don't ask me how you could get lost in a stable, but it does happen on occasion, then any pony who knew the lost pony's tag could identify them instantly. It can even be made to glow like a lamp. So, yes, pit bucks really are a testament to unicorn pony arcane science. And yes, having a pit buck is a big advantage. I like how they explain how it works. So, with how wonderful and miraculous all that It's pretty cool. Out, it's hard to impress upon ponies who never lived in a stable just how ordinary, how pedestrian, a pit buck was in the eyes of the ponies living in stable too. And why I was disappointed to have one as my cutie mark. Oh shit. 
Yeah, that's right. I see it on the picture. All that stuff I mentioned, most ponies don't even use half of that. They just used it to tune into the stable broadcast, listening to the sweet, sweet voice of Velvet Remedy in the evenings, or the latest school skiing competitions during the day. The stable had two soccer leagues, one which allowed sats and one which prohibited it. Otherwise, most ponies paid their pit bucks almost no attention at all. The Overmare issues each pony their own pit buck on the day of their cue to mark party. Usually a day or two after you get the mark on your flanks that tells every pony what makes you special, what you're destined to be good at. But once it shows, the Overmare knows what work to assign you, or know your place in the stable. So, no, I was not thrilled that what made me special was something that every pony had, which was a lot like being told I wasn't special at all. Sure. Yeah. Getting a pit buck as my key to mark could have meant I was destined to become an awesome pit buck repair filly or something. But in reality, it was like getting a cue to mark of a cue to mark. True. Didn't That's kind of true. Last pony to get her cue to mark. Whoa, my lights just flickered. Not surprising in retrospect. Kind of tough to find out what you're supposed to be good at, when what you're supposed to be good at is something you don't get until you found out what you're supposed to be good at. So I tried everything. I even tried to invent new things. As a unicorn pony myself, my innate magics allowed me a level of fine manipulation that earth ponies didn't enjoy. Any pony can hold a key in their teeth and open a lock, but using tools in a very delicate operation? That requires precision levitation. So I decided to learn to pick locks with a bobby pin and screwdriver. And I was even getting pretty good at it. Unfortunately, it didn't get me my cue to mark. It just got me in trouble. I even, except hmm. my humiliation, went through the cat, cutie mark aptitude test, Damn. in the hopes it would guide me to what made me special. But no. My cat was utterly average, with only marginally higher scores in a couple areas, indicating huh. that I might be suited for work as a pit buck technician or stable loyalty inspector. Two options, I should note, that were even less impressive when he considered that it was generally expected that unicorn ponies got into either technical or administrative work. That is, except the unicorn ponies who are natural artists, like the Velvet Remedy. As I said before, uh, our hair at Magic okay, is a sort of fine manipulation that technical work demands. Likewise, the Overmare and her government are always unicorn ponies. It is the Overmare's unicorn magic, after all, that creates the false sunlight used to grow our underground apple orchard. And while our apples might not look like those beautiful red things in the old books, they are what keep us alive. Yeah, yeah. It was only because they let me try my hooves at both positions. I'm kind of curious what that kind of apple would taste like. My own. Otherwise, I might never have gotten my cutie mark. Oh, my name is Little Pip. Go figure. I was given the name because I was the youngest and the smallest, and even my mother had a good sense not to call me Pip's Week. That's good. Not That's good. I love her, but when a filly's cutie mark is a glass of hard apple cider. Anyways. <laughs> like that turn out sometimes. Uh, she called his mama drunk. Here's my story. <laughs> oh, okay, we're going to the next video, so. Wow, he just made it. He just made himself sound sexy, or whoa. I wish I could see. Okay, I have to be honest here. Um, let's see, let's see, let's go let's see what we got so far. What I'm processing here, that all these people are fucking forced to work, and they are constantly unable to comprehend what they have to do because 
They constantly have to get some sort of inspiration. It's like those motivational posters you would see at a workplace. We have them in the army too. It's kind of weird, but in opinion, I think if it takes some a poster to get you motivated, I think you're gonna have a, probably have an easy job. But but seriously, um, these um, music, yes, it does help with the work problems. It does help with work, and it does like and art does kind of help too. Honestly, I spread my room with a whole bunch of posters and stuff to make it more, how should I put it? Can this even hear my audio? One sec. Oh yeah, they can hear my audio. Okay, but yeah, I see what he's saying here. That this place does need a mirror. What he's saying is the place needs a mirror. And he would love some kind of piece of artwork. And what am I thinking here? Um, I, I actually have lost my train of thought, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> but I see his point. I see what's going on here is these people are trapped, and they have nothing but music and art to keep them keep their spirits up. That way, because me honestly, I feel the same way. As I said, I cover my room and uh and and stuff. That's, you know, awesome, beautiful things that I like. And I do that because I hate being in dull places. And I think the stables, or in this case, if you're speaking in human standards, the vaults would be dull as hell. Come on, if we've all played, if you've played Fallout, you've seen what the inside of a vault looks like. If you've played Fallout 3 or Fallout 4, you've seen what they look like on the inside. And you've realized how terrible this really is. So... So, yeah, so I, I think we should continue now. Oh, like you. <laughs> Hold up. I have to say this right now because the way this guy described Velvet Remedy is basically the same way he could probably could describe his voice. Seriously, I think I think this guy's voice is like equivalent, like it's compatible to Morgan Freeman right now. It's compatible to Morgan Freeman. Her barn door don't swing that way. I wanted to dig my way through the concrete floor and pull the chunks over top of me. She smiled sweetly. She smiled at me. In that amazing voice. You looked so heartbroken when I came in. Is there anything I can do? The Velvet Remedy offered to help me. I was shocked back to my senses. The Velvet Remedy must have some reason for being down here. Some pit buck reason. It wasn't like she would just go wandering around maintenance after all. Looking around, I realized that I was the only pony on duty. My teacher was, as usual, asleep in his office. Oh, oh, no, it was nothing. I tried to regain composure. How may I be of assistance? Velvet Remedy's expression was both compassionate and unconvinced. Get it! I the of, raising the buck to my gaze. A more elegant model than mine, with her initials in cutie mark, a beautiful bird with wings outstretched and beak open in song, embellishing it tastefully. I hate to be a bother, but it's beyond a chafe. Could you replace the padding? Oh, absolutely. I was already levitating the special keys used to unlock a pit boy from a pony's foreleg. As an apprentice pit buck technician, I had all the manner of special precision tools in my pockets of my utility barding. I'll have it done right quick. The pit buck came off with a click. The Velvet Remedy chuckled hesitantly, lowering her hoof. Oh no, that's all right. Take your time. 
I'm going to put some salve on this blade back in my room and rest it up for the afternoon. That's right. I felt a remedy was performing at the Stable 2 Saloon tomorrow night. I would have to polish it up and make it worthy of being worn above her hoof. If I spent all night on it, I could give it a full tune-up, have it running as smoothly as the day she got it, and still have it back to her before or so. All right, I'll have it back to you by this time tomorrow. You won't be disappointed, I promise. She smiled at me again, and all the gray in the world couldn't darken my day. Thank you. And then she turned to go. I watched as her cutie mark disappeared around the doorway. Quit staring at her ass, man. The next day, I was whistling one of Velvet Remedy's songs as I walked down the halls toward her room. Turning the corner, I was started out of my reverie by a mass of ponies gathered outside Velvet Remedy's room. Damn. I was going to have to battle my way through the footprint seekers and paparazzi. Levitating the pit buck higher, I started to shove my way into the crowd. She's gone. How could she leave? Hushed ponies and panicked whinnies around me grew alarming. Why would she abandon us? Gone? Velvet Remedy was... gone? And then the words that stopped me cold. I don't think the stable door ever could open. She was gone outside? Don't worry, every pony, boomed the voice of the overmare from somewhere in the crowd. I have the tag of each and every pony in the stable. I will personally send out a rescue party. We'll have our velvet back by the end of the day. Worry not. I felt I was drowning in cold, wet cement. My gaze slowly moved up towards the pit buck floating above me. I lowered my head, slowly trying to back out of the crowd, curling the floating pit buck close. When the overmare brought up Velvet Remedy's tag, it would lead every pony not to Velvet, but to a pit buck sitting in the maintenance. With a thump, I backed into some pony, startling me enough that the levitation field evaporated, and poof, a clean and shiny pit buck clattered to the floor. Turning, I found myself eye to eye with the overmare. She didn't speak, her gaze turned to the pit buck on the ground. Velvet Remedy's initials and cutie mark clearly visible. What is this? The Overmare spoke slowly and dangerously. All eyes turned to me. I could feel every pair of eyes. Nobody spoke. The silence bore down like a lead blanket. My mouth went dry. I couldn't find my voice. I didn't need to. I could feel the wave of loathing. Dozens of Velvet Remedy's fan ponies. And I was the pony holding the reason why their idol was lost to them. Damn. The Overmare's voice was low and surprisingly gentle. Take it to your room. Swiftly. She didn't need to tell me twice. I lay on my bed that evening, poking the velvet remedy's pit buck at the radio in my own played yet another reiteration of the tragedy of the day. The velvet remedy was gone. I couldn't understand. How could she leave? Why would she go? The door out of stable two was closed and sealed, but a ghost story some pony told me in my first and only slumber party had given me a horrible nightmare and still lurked in the shadows of my head. A tale of a pony who somehow got the stable door open and stepped outside, only to find that there was no outside. Just a great nothingness that whisked the pony away, devouring her soul as she was nothingness too. Empirically, I knew that wasn't the case, but the mental image still haunted me. The two things I did understand was that Velvet Remedy had gotten me to remove her pit buck so the Overmare couldn't track her with it, and that I was screwed. Damn. Being the smallest pony my age, and the last to get my cutie mark, I did not facilitate building friendships with my peer ponies. Mother honestly didn't help either, nor did waking up screaming at my first slumber party. So I was used to being alone, but I'd never had enemies before. I'd been beneath the notice of other ponies, but I'd never had one hate me. I really couldn't blame them either even though it totally wasn't fair. They were upset and hurt and needed a scapegoat. The news hadn't mentioned me by name yet, just Velvet Remedy's custom decorated pit buck was found in the possession of a pit buck technician pony. But with a whole two of us, it wasn't hard for every pony to figure out, even with the scene outside her room earlier. The Overmer was speaking on the radio. We are all feeling this loss, but I want to remind every pony that Velvet Remedy chose to do this. She chose to leave her home, to abandon us, her family. She betrayed my trust and she betrayed yours, just as she betrayed the trust of the pony who she tricked into removing her pit buck, ensuring we could not find her. I know many of you are angry or hurt. I urge you to direct that anger where it truly belongs. As thankful as I was for her words, it wasn't going to change the resentment that I would face every day, even if every pony kept it to themselves. It hung in the air like old smoke. Damn. I distracted myself with 
That's true. It does happen like that. If something terrible happens, those some people will play the blame game. I didn't want to open it then, but that virus picked the bell remedies privacy. And it is like a spoilers. But I guess it didn't matter anymore. The song would never be played. Opening a pouch on my utility barding, I withdrew an access tool that would allow me to remove the encryption safely and easily. It was a sound file. I played it. The override code for opening the door to Sable 2 is CMC3BFF. I shot off in surprise at what I had heard. Swiftly, I turned off the radio and played it again. I didn't recognize the voice. It was female, kind of sweet, and had a strange accent that didn't sound like anyone in the stable. But now I knew how Velma ran when he left. I must have sat there for hours, contemplating what I should do. But finally, I made my choice. I was going to go outside after her. I was going to bring her back. I stood there, staring at the huge steel door that sealed the stable away from the horse, or nothingness, outside. And the two guard ponies who blocked the way. I had my saddlebags packed with apples and necessities. Even a big book of arcane sciences for something to read. I had two canteens around my neck. I was ready to go. But the overmare was making sure there were no follow-up acts. Insistence and glowering looks weren't getting me anywhere. My horn was glowing, but they stood their ground, unimpressed. They weren't going to let me anywhere near the control panel. Hey, aren't you the filly who let our velvet get lost outside anyway? One of the guards inquired, daringly taking a bullying step forward. The other guard looked away in disgust. I'm not sure if he was disgusted at me, or he felt like the overmare seemed too concerned about ponies wanting to take it out on me. I was kind of hoping it was the former, considering what I was about to do to them. Thud. A metal footlock above them dropped onto their heads, knocking both out cold. Earth ponies. They never see that levitating something up behind you trick coming. I was at the controls, entering the passcode from Velvet Remedy's pit buck when the Overmare's voice boomed through the nearby speakers. Stop! I order you to stop this instant! Yeah, that wasn't going to happen. Guards, I want every pony at Stable 2 door. Stop that filly! Oh, crap. Filly! So it is a female. Switch for the door, and I prayed to Celestia that the code worked. Then, with all my strength, I threw the switch. A loud clang Again, I, it's been a while, so I don't remember the stuff. shook the room. As I watched, the massive bolt that held the door from Stable 2 shot slid back. A huge hinge arm swung down, attaching itself to the door, and with a teeth-hurting squeal, pulled the massive steel door out and away. Randomly, I found myself thinking in my mother's voice, Stable 2's barn door doesn't swing that way. The door to the stable wasn't supposed to open at all. Even though I threw the switch, I was stunned to see it actually open. You don't have to do this, little pip, isn't it? The overmare's voice kicked me out of my stupor. I could hear the hooves of galloping guards drawing near. I took a step towards the door. Don't worry, I'll bring her back. No, you won't. If you leave here, you'll never be let back in. This is basically an iteration of Fallout 3. The overmare was willing to send out a search party to bring Velvet Remedy back. But then, Velvet was special. I was... not. Part of me wanted to turn back right there crawl back to my room in my dreary but safe life. Drawing myself up, I stepped out the door. With a final hissing clang, the steel door of Stable 2 closed irrevocably behind me. I don't know what I expected to find just beyond the door, but it certainly wasn't this long, dark hallway that smelled of rotting timbers and sepulcher air. It was no longer in the stable, but I wasn't outside yet either. I was in limbo. I turned on my pit buck light and recoiled with a gasp at the skeletons of long dead ponies which littered the hall. The outside of the stable door was marred from where ponies had slammed on until their hooves cracked and shattered, trying to get in. Moving forward quickly, I discovered that the hallway opened to an old room with stairs leading up to a horizontal door with a shattered lock. The entrance from the outside world into stable two had been cleverly disguised as the door to a humble apple cellar. Hmm. And by disguise, I mean that the person who built it had been building an apple cellar. Taking a deep breath, I trod up the stairs, swung open the cellar door, and stepped outside. Damn. Okay. So I'm going to actually cut it off here. Because I think I've ha had enough. And I have enough to process, and enough for you guys to process if you guys haven't heard this story yet. But this is actually pretty good. Now, again, I will say this again. Whoever you are reading this, you will seduce any woman with that voice. I will say that right now. And, or man, whatever you prefer. Just saying.
I wish I had a voice that 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 sexy. I wish I did. God damn, my voice. I don't think my voice is very pleasant, so I don't think I should be reading things aloud. So anyway, anyway, that's a sidetrack. I hope you guys enjoyed this um, this um, this fan fiction blind commentary because this was actually pretty fucking cool. This is pretty fucking cool, and I want to continue. So anyway, guys, I'll catch you guys later, and stay nerdy, my friends. Bye-bye!